in a case of an MNA or a transformation, yeah, you need to be careful from the executive team that you don't lose your key people. So this should be yes. a very important uh, objective, yeah, in an MNA or in a in a transformation yeah, that that you keep your good people. And I think here there is yep. there is something to to still be be improved yeah in how in how we treat this yeah and, and who, who is treating this because normally you know there is sometimes a tendency yeah, that we say that uh, change management is something to be done by hr or by the transformation yes <laughs> which is not yeah, the yeah. case change yeah. management is management management is also change yeah. management so it needs to come i'm going to coach you on that top. yeah exactly it needs to come from the CEO, it needs to come from the C-level, and they should walk the talk, yeah? Of course, the people who support with with some tools from HR or from the, from the transformation team, they can support with some tools, yeah? But in the end, it needs to be lived and applied by the top management, yeah? And by the middle yep, okay. or levels of the management. Yep. If you work in strategy development and implementation and work to ensure that the strategy is aligned to business design and technology, then you're probably a business transmitter. This is the show where we speak to industry experts and professionals to share their stories, strategies, and insights to help you start and turn around and grow your business transformation. Welcome to the Business Transformation Podcast. And in this episode, we are talking to one of those industry experts. We are speaking to Arena Bentu who is a 20-year veteran in business and digital transformation, who has worked across different verticals in, from manufacturing to oil and gas all across Europe on a lot of large-scale transformations. Arena, how are you? Thank you for inviting me. I'm, I'm really great. So I'm excited to be here yeah, and to exchange with you some, some ideas. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you, thank you. for thank inviting you. me. Good to have you here. Okay, so... <laughs> As we used to do, as we talk, uh, we have a, a theme and we talk about a couple of points. So this theme we're going to talk about is M&A and particularly uh, post merger and acquisition migration or inter integration. And so for that, we say, okay, is there industry? What is the industry doing at the moment? Have they got this right? Do they understand it? Is it working well? We could, you know, view, we have some examples there of where it worked well or not worked well, this post migration integration. Number two is, is there a particular approach that you follow or take when you go into a client or your own client, um, your own business, or about how you manage the post-migration uh, or post-M&A integration? And number three is now having 20 years, two decades experience, worked all across Europe in, in these big, large-scale transformations. If you could do it again, what would you do differently, if anything at all? Okay, so first up, the industry, post-migration or post-M&A um, integration, what's the industry doing? Are they doing it, have they got a good handle on it? Are they doing it well? Is there room for improvement? Is there lessons learned? So I think as in everything, yeah, there is, there is the room for improvement, yeah. So of course, there are things that are done very well, yeah, and things that could be improved, yeah. Uh, from my experience, you know, so I was part or I was leading post-merger integration, yeah, starting like 18 years ago, yeah, and until these days, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, when we talk about 18 years ago, yeah, there were maybe not so much, so many things know about how to how to best lead such a, such a change, yeah, or what would be the, yep. the mm. tools, yeah, to be used. You know, there were yep. a, lo a lot of, of a trial and an, and an, and an error, yeah, which, of course, in time mm. was, was really improved, yeah. Yep. What I can say, what I what what I have noticed the past years, yeah, I think first of all, it shouldn't be underestimated, you know, in terms when when you acquire a company or a business unit, yeah. Of course, we always talk about about the culture, yeah. But when you talk about the culture, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe it seems like ah, oh, okay, it's something I don't understand so well. Yeah. In the end, what is the culture? Yeah. Yeah, it's the way that people mm -hmm. are used to work and the way they are doing, leading the, all the processes, yeah, and the way that they are also p performing, yeah. So what I would yep. say, uh -huh. uh, what, what I would give as a tip or a tool, yeah, 
in case of a post merger integration yeah the the first the first thing is that that you sit from the management team and the management team of the of the company or of the department or of the business unit which was acquired yeah and you work together on a plan yeah? it's very important that the plan is done together as a team and engaging all the key players from both of the companies because this uh-huh. is how you yep. will engage the people from both of the companies and of course we know that the ones that were acquired yeah are in a more difficult situation yeah than the company who has yep. acquired them yeah so of course mm-hmm. if you do okay. this from the beginning and you continue to do it and engage in them yeah in the in yep. the next month yeah this would be one of the keys of the success yeah okay um so what, so there's yeah. a there's a so there's a difference between the acquirer and the acquiree okay so and sometimes there's a friendly takeover or merger and then not so so okay and a different strategy for different situation i think you, you know because i have this lean six sigma background and i'm very influenced by this and i think when you talk about mm-hmm. about about the transformation you talk about lean and we talk and when you talk about lean yeah. you talk about about the transformation yeah the first yeah. thing that you need to figure out is what is the problem that you want to solve yeah so when you make uh-huh. an acquisition yeah or when you take a, take a decision to start any transformation yeah you need to be sure about what is the problem that you want to solve yeah you don't yep. just need to jump into the solution yeah because it might be the, that you 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 will tackle the symptoms and not the, not the problem yeah yes so yep. if you think very very thoroughly yeah about about the problem yeah and if you analyze it and measure it yeah then of course mm-hmm. it's uh-huh. easier yes. to decide in a team yeah what are the solutions yeah and what are mm-hmm. the improvement measures that that you want to take yeah yeah okay go so, so stop it there for a second so, so the audience missed that, and I sort of said from the beginning that Arena is a leading big six sigma black belt, or black belt. So the um, the, so if you missed it, and I think you're, what you're saying is if you don't measure it, you can't improve it. So the first thing you, you said was that you need to find out what measure that you're trying to improve. Exactly. Yeah. So if we follow yeah a little bit, because in the linear yeah, you put a lot of an attention yeah and a lot of effort into this phase of definition of the problem and measuring of, of the problem and then analyzing of the root cause yeah and i think this yep, is okay. what what we can learn when we do even in in mnas or when we start 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 a transformation yeah to put more of focus on this part yeah on definition mm-hmm. measuring and analyzing before we do an improvement plan uh-huh okay I can imagine, and from my personal professional experience, that can be a where people want to stop and understand what what the situation is today versus oh we've got this change and agenda and a vision. Let's just go for the future state. But you're saying no, wait, let's understand the current state and let's measure it so we know how to improve it. And even even further than that, take it back to identifying the root cause and start from there. Exactly. Yeah. So this is how I how how I normally start. Yeah. And this is the very first step. Yeah. That you you yeah. you should do in a in a transformation. And then we go uh-huh. into into aligning, discussing what is the vision and what is our mission and what is our improvement plan. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So okay. So before we get into that second question part about the process. What is the industry you think is doing right? Have they are they understand this? So you said, I think the cultural part, I don't think we, the cultural part, understanding the culture, is that, the, in terms of M&A and the industry, have they got that right? Or are they more concerned about dollar signs and ROI and how quickly can we get this integration going? And no, we're going to get some, there's going to be some casualties and we should expect some casualties and some resignations and there's going to be disgruntled employees. Is that all uh, M&A activity, hunky dory. It's working well. They don't need to change, or they're so focused on finances versus the the culture, the people. So in the past years, this this has changed 
a lot, yeah. And now, now from what I can see, there is a lot of more focus on the sustainability of the businesses. And when I say uh, sustainability, uh-huh. I don't mean, mean only ESG, but I mean all, yeah. also the people, yeah. And how the people and uh, the opinions of the people are considered, you know, in 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 any 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 transformation, yeah. So that it doesn't come only top down, yeah. So I think mm-hmm. this this, yeah. this this has changed a lot in the the past years, yeah. And I think if okay. you just if you just stay in your vision that you want to improve the the return of investment, yeah, for your shareholders, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, this will not stand. This will not stand. Yeah. And I think that that people are more and more attracted, yeah, to the companies who are much more than this, who wants to bring something back yeah. to the to the employees and the. So- and the so- society in which they live, yeah. So it's not not yeah. only about the money, yeah. Definitely not. So yeah. some, some, uh, what is it? It's, it's the, like the the not say society, but the the values. Exactly, exactly. The values. So it's not only what we do; is how we do it, yeah. And what yeah. I have seen okay. is that, and I would I would definitely encourage this because I have seen some good examples, yeah. When you define your uh, objectives for your team, yeah, for your executives, for for your managers, yeah, you shouldn't put mm-hmm. just these smart objectives. What to do or what do we, do you need to achieve in terms of KPIs? Yeah, but you should put also yeah. how 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 to measure how they will achieve it. Yeah, because this how is very linked to the to to the values of the company. Yeah, so if you don't exhibit yep. its values when you deliver on the performance then in the end you don't have a place in that company yeah at least this is how 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 i see things yeah and i think <laughs> here there is m- much more to be to be improved yeah and can be improved yeah that we look also on the how we do things not only on what we do yeah, yeah focus on the how okay so you're seeing exactly. in terms of a trend over time that and if, from the beginning of beginning of your career, lessons are learned. There's more tools available, and the shift has gone towards the the people part about how they their role maybe in the transformation, but also how they feel through the transformation, and and then making sure that those goals or objectives have got that people element in it, the cultural element, their values, that the uh, not so much the hard and fast structural, as you said. The smart nor the ROI, but yeah, that I like how you said it. The how part. How are they achieving them? How are they achieving their goals? How are they achieving their objectives? Exactly, exactly. Okay, so that's that's what the industry is doing right, and then probably the co- the converse of that is what they'll be doing wrong. Is probably if they were, as you said, if um if it was just focusing on the the financials without any consideration for the people element. Then uh, that's probably what they've learned over time. That that is not a winning strategy. You probably get some unintended casualties because you are focused on the hard line fundamental financials, and then you might lose some staff because they don't feel their place in the organisation anymore. Exactly, and I think especially in in a case of an M and A or a transformation, yeah, you need to be careful from the from the executive team that you don't lose your key people, yeah. So this should be yes. a very important uh, objective, yeah, in a in a in in an M and A or in a in a transformation yeah, that that you keep your good people and you your key people and you don't lose them on the way, yeah. And I think here there is yep. there is something to to still be be improved, yeah, in how in how we treat this, yeah, and and who who is treating this, because normally you know there is sometimes a tendency, yeah, that we say that. Uh, Change management is something to be done by HR or by the transformation. Yes. Which is not <laughs> yeah, the yeah. case. Change yeah. management is management. Management is also change yeah. management. So it needs to come I'm from quote you on the that. top. Yeah. Exactly. It needs to come from the CEO. It needs to come from the C level and they should walk the talk. Yeah. Of course, the people who support with with some tools from HR or from the from the transformation team, they can support with some tools. Yeah, but in the end. It needs to be lived and applied by the top management, yeah, and by the middle yep, okay. by all levels of the management. Yep. So not just from the guys upstairs, from the top, 
but middle management as well. Exactly. I like what you said there. I'm going to quote you. I'm, you know, I've got my head down writing because I'm taking notes here. The, the, I like what you said there. Change management is management. It's like, yeah, it's like stakeholder management. It, it's, it's like this is management. Exactly. This is the management. whole thing is management. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, the it's, it's not a special. Yeah. yeah. We only do this because we're doing a transformation. No, this is what you should be doing anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. All right. So this is what the 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 industry has learned over time. They've got some new tools and techniques. They've gone away from hard factual financial data and and, and smart measures to now including the like you said the ESG and the, the people elements. Um and it is agreed and from the top down top down everyone's like living and breathing these things now, right? Not something yes. that is just said. Yep. Yeah, I think as I said, yeah, I, I definitely see see this improving and I definitely see an improved collaboration, you know, at the at the C level, you know, or at the head of the department, you know. And I think it's very, mm -hmm. very important to to really in such situations, you know, to speak with one voice, yeah. And not that that, you know, each department is it, it, going their own way yeah you need to to have very good aligned objectives yeah, and very good aligned uh, you need to be very good aligned in terms of your of your objectives of your speech of of your approach of uh, how you just yep. appear in front of your people yeah. and this is mm -hmm. this, this i have seen also here big changes yeah of course depends a lot on on the the leadership skills of of everybody yeah and uh, yeah, yep. we need to just just we need to we need to continue improve this. Yep. Okay. Build on it. Continue to build on exactly. it. Exactly. Alrighty. Okay. So that's what the industry is doing. Now, your particular approach coming into these change and transformations, post -mer post merger integration. Do you have a particular approach you follow, and what is it? Yeah. So. As I said, after definition of the problem, you know, and we know, okay, yep. what do we want to solve? Yeah, for me, and I will, I will go a little bit back again to Lean Six Sigma because I like a tool very much from there, which I'm, I'm yep. applying a, a lot. And this is the, is the Hoshin Kanri. The Hoshin Kanri, it's about how you set your vision and your objectives for the next three to five years, and your, and you. you your objective for the next year, but it's not an exercise that is done just top down by the C level, but it's an it's a it's an exercise yeah. which is done in the organization with the people, with the people engaged and uh, having an input into into these objectives. And I think it's a very nice thing because it's very motivating. It's called the catch ball effect, you know, because you just catch, catch ball. the ball and you throw the ball to the others, yeah. And uh, yep. it really it supports also to eliminate these initiatives which are not supporting you to uh, uh, to really work on your objectives. Yeah. So because mm -hmm. you have a very good definition from the beginning of the, the vision of your objectives and uh, mid and mid and long term and then the then the short term objectives and this is done in every department in every site you know in every in, in every function. And then when you define your, I call it yearly improvement plan, you know, which which actually needs to be to be to be there for each of the functions and each of the of of the departments. Eh? Then you uh -huh. then you will ensure that all initiatives that you have there will will support you to achieve your objectives. Yeah. So it's okay, a very so... it's a very good tool. Yeah, a tool. It's not a tool. Oh. It's a method. It's a, it's a way of doing things in the end. There's a well-kept secret in business transformation that no one is talking about. And that's 70% of business transformations fail, wasting time, money, and missed opportunities. There are four common causes of project failure, lack of business user involvement, lack of senior leadership support, changing requirements, and incomplete requirements. Clients, however, don't know this. And more importantly, they don't know what to do. They're either told they need reams and reams of beautiful PowerPoint presentations, but they're really just marketing documents. Marketing for the consultancy to convince you of the more work they will bill you for. They are just designed to run up the billable hours 
or they're told to send their staff off to do training to get certified in old outdated methods that result in 70% failure. Clients know if they bring in the big four, they will get a big four bill and no transformation. They load the project up with junior staff that produce an interesting but useless documentation that they will tell you it is needed, that is full of jargon and the latest buzzwords, it sounds very impressive, but means absolutely nothing. It's well known in the industry, you get a big four in, They'll steal your watch to tell you the time and you pay them millions for the favor. That's the old broken model of business transformation. If you're ready to move to the new model of business transformation, join me. My name is Heath Gascoigne and I'm the author of this book, The Business Transformation Playbook, How to Implement Your Organization's Target Operating Model, TOM, and Achieve a 0% Failure Rate Using the Six-Step Agile Framework, HOBA, House of Business Architecture, that I created and have been using for over 15 years with my private clients, including the UK government, 5,100 companies and startups. I'm the guy the clients call to come in and set up and turn around their failing transformations. If you're a business owner, leader or manager, a change or transformation consultant, or you lead one, and you wanna to move to the new model of transformation, I'm holding a free 90 minute masterclass to get your 2023 year off to the best possible start with your transformation. Make sure you join me. You need to know where and how you're going wrong and what exactly you need to do and only do, not boiling the ocean, trying to do everything, especially how to don't get caught in the interesting but useless documentation trap and how to avoid joining the 70% that fail, but instead join the top 30% club that make business transformation a success first time on time. Details how to register are below this video. Click the link below. Whether you are a beginner or an expert, we'll get you started. Okay, so, so let me play it back to you. The first part is the, the vision and objectives over three to five years. So your long-term, mid-term, and, and almost immediate or tactical. And then it's not an exercise that is done from the top down. It is done from from top all the way down. Not from the top, but involves everyone all the way down. And the I'm going to quote you on this one too, the catch ball effect. Where, so this would be, now it's been set here, what does that mean to the functions and departments and divisions and their interpretation of how they got their workers aligned to the the strategic vision and objectives? And then out of there, you're developing improvement plans for each of those functions. Exactly, because in the end, it needs to be the people who will who will also work on the delivery. So if mm -hmm. if they are not involved and they cannot say their opinion, in the end, they are the expert you know that we that we have yeah. and they need to tell us how they <laughs> how they can achieve our objectives yeah and if maybe yeah. we from top management we 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 would like something but it may be not possible yeah they will tell us and they yeah. will tell us how we can make it possible yeah and yeah okay this is why i i really love this method you know because it's it really it's supporting engagement and the motivation of the people and it's eliminating waste yeah which is actually yeah, okay what, so what you need in a company yeah, and, and and eliminating waste and so and in, in terms of lean we're talking tim wood right so all the wastes time inventory motion exactly exactly and yeah. you don't focus on something that is not according to the vision or to your objectives mid the long term yeah why to do things which are not in line with, with this you don't need to yeah yep yeah, okay so in case the audience missed that, what we're, you've been talking about is really about the people element of the transformation. And so, which is, I, I, I think what I've seen when they will say we're doing a transformation, they'll focus on process or technology or moving some tool or information, uh, whether it's an application or someone's identity or passport or some visa application through the organization. But the other the part that's missing is the change of all the working ways of working, which is the people. And what you just all stressed there was about setting the vision. So they had a vision for the people from the top of the organization all the way down. And then from the, the people, and you even said the words. So I, I was smiling there because it's like that, in case you missed it, what Arena said there was the people in the operations and the business are the experts. And yeah, so I've seen many transformations where it's either the guys upstairs uh, dictating what they think and understand of what happens in the business without actually doing the business. And so their perception versus reality is, a, is disconnected. And so you're saying, so the takeaway, guys, for the listeners is 
you've got to speak to the people who are actually doing the work. I, uh, if, 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 you know, if I pray, paraphrase you, it is the people do the work, understand the work the best. Is that's who you need to get to and to do the change. Exactly, and I would add something else. In the end, you know, your key people are the operators from from the production side or the sales people. Yeah. So then all the rest needs to work to support them achieve their objectives. Yeah. Because if they will achieve their yeah. objectives, they will not have any any delays, any 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 issues. Then we all will will win. Yeah. So in the end, our role, yeah, yeah. As managers, <laughs> yeah. Is, is to support yeah. them, achieve their objectives. Yeah, we are there to enable, to eliminate yeah. all the barriers, yeah, and to yeah. make sure that all the problems will be very fast escalated so that we can solve the problems for them, so that they can do the they, that they can do the their their part. Yeah, okay. So so your your background, just to play play the back is is manufacturing. So manufacturing but also you, it's oil and gas. So there's, in terms of, uh, to summarize, the oil and gas may be, you know, uh, discovery, export, raw production into some form of packaging, then retail and distribution and logistics. So it's a full, full supply chain. And so what you said there, in case the audience missed it, when you talked about reducing delays, yeah. which is a real six Sigma mindset, right? And so... <laughs> And so when you reduce delays, you're, of course, increasing frequency and velocity. And then, of course, in Six Sigma, about reducing error. And so you've got a fast-moving machine. And until and so those in a service industry, if you've got a, um, a product or service that you're offering to a customer that you can reduce delays and improve quality, you've got a good user experience. Exactly. Exactly. And this is what you want, yeah. because in the end, what do you want? You want to make the customer happy yeah? and to deliver him what he wants in the time that he wants with the quality that he yeah. wants. Yeah. 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 Time, cost, cost, quality. Exactly. The old pro or project HQCD, management dilemma. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. True. But so that came back to, though, that came back to we are the, and the, the, you said it earlier about the key people. Make sure that you look after the key people, and then when and then in the process about how if you understand or p protect them really to get make sure that they um we can reduce the delays or reduce the waste around them that they all the KPIs are tied to their objectives. If they win, we all win. Exactly, exactly. And I would like to mention here another key people. Yeah person or a function yeah and this is not because mm -hmm. me and you we are we are active in the transformation but this is the transformation lead yeah so you can call mm -hmm. them the transformation leads or i don't know the operations excellence lead whatever you will call them but mm -hmm. even if you define a good vision and good objective and you have a good good uh, good uh, improvement plan yeah you need you yep. need need the governance and the drum beat yeah you oh, need to follow up yeah. on this oh, yeah. and all yeah. the, and if you are an, an executive you will need the support and the right hand to support you on this yeah to make sure that everything is on track that that you know that people are engaged that that you support for this engagement yeah that you make the link yep. you know as a transformation when you feel that things are not going well you know and 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 objectives are not achieved, you know, that you will make the link between all these guys and all the function, yeah. So I think it's very important that you have a good uh, kind of a structure and and the governance, yeah, not to do it just, yep. uh, yeah, just like a this. talking a theater. They they have the organized or well, the governance structure set up, but it's really uh, either a talking fest and doesn't get any decisions made, which I've seen on big transformations. It's all it's theater. It's governance theatre. It, it looks good and sounds good, but it has actually has no teeth, no decisions get made or the deferred. Okay, so there's a key point there. You're talking about governance, and, and uh, we almost missed that. And you see the drum beat, the drum beat. So yeah, can you explain on that more? Yeah. So yeah. this, what I want to say is that we need to measure the results. Yeah. So okay, we set a uh -huh. plan. Now we start start executing. Yeah. But somebody needs to make sure that we are on the right track yeah so it needs it needs a measurement so we need to set mm -hmm. up a system of kpis that we can measure yep. what what we deliver 
and uh, we need to uh, we need to meet, but we don't need to meet just for meeting, but we need to meet uh, to have like a kind of uh, meetings that we set up each week or each day, but we will set them uh -huh. up just to solve the problems and to remove the bottlenecks. Yeah, so we don't yep. okay. just meet to meet. Yep. Yeah, we meet to yep. solve the problems okay. and to and to and to remove the bottlenecks. Yeah, because this is okay. how you make things roll. Yeah, and deploy. And in the end, okay. yes, you will measure and you we report on the on the deliveries to to to, to the top management, yeah, and uh, it needs to roll. Okay, so you're meeting on a daily basis or a, a frequently agreed basis, but it's not to it's not a um a catch up and how how's your how's your weekend? It is a a very f focused um um session to identify and resolve bottlenecks and issues. Exactly. And I can give yeah, you an example, yeah, which I have deployed and of course not, not only me, yeah. And of course it depends a lot on the function or on the department where you are, yeah. Uh, it can start uh -huh. on the on the uh, shop floor. It, it it is called the five minute meeting or the short interval control. And what is yep. what is going on there? All the functions on the shop floor, like for example, the the quality, the production, the the supply chain, yeah, they meet each uh -huh. morning at eight, just for five to ten minutes, and they just look on the topics that they couldn't solve by themselves, yeah. So it is it is just oh, okay. a meeting, you know, to see okay what we couldn't solve at our level. What do we need to escalate to the to, to, to the next to, to the next level yeah which is for example yep. the site site management team yeah and it's just for five uh -huh. to ten minutes because everybody knows what they have to do but sometimes of course yep. they can't just solve it by themselves yeah and then at, uh -huh. at in one hour there is another meeting you know again a five to ten minutes meeting yeah with the site management team where they look at these points that couldn't be solved yeah uh -huh. and of course they they will take them and solve them or if something is not being able to be solved it will be escalated to the, escalated. To, to, uh, to the next level but the nice thing is that in in a few hours yeah you can have all these problems escalated and solved so, yeah very fast yeah. and this we did uh -huh. not only on the shop floor but we did also in the corporate functions yeah and there are a lot of companies who implemented this so not only on the shop floor but also in the corporate functions yeah and they are yep. very successful because they just find out very fast about the problems and solve them and this okay, is okay that's I a great think, tip yeah, yeah. In, and it's not that, that it's solving you also the problems but it gets you used to used to a kind of a routine because you don't want mm. to be the one you, you want to solve the problems by yourself as much as it is possible. So it puts a lot of mm. an accountability on each of the person. Yeah. Uh, because of course you don't want to um, have escalations each day to the, to, uh, to the top management. Yeah. You want to do as mm. much as possible to solve the problem by, by, by yourself. Yourself. And yep. it improves, and it improves the, collaboration between the teams yeah because when i say by yeah. yourself i say actually by the team on the shop floor at the site level at the middle management level yeah up to the to the to the top management yeah okay so the what are we calling it we're calling it the you can short uh, interval control you can call it or five minutes meeting it is called or shop floor management you know it depends yeah different okay. companies different names yeah yeah. Okay. Some would call it a, a well in my space for um, say agile framework mm. would be a stand up, but a stand up is and what well I like to run our stand ups is to say what you've done yesterday, what you've got planned today, and what's going to stop you. But yours is really focused on the issues that assuming that you know, BAU and they can execute their normal delivery, that what issues they couldn't solve themselves are so very focused on removing those bottlenecks or and you, you said earlier the um reducing delays and then and then the first escalation was already in the diary of an hour later well, i think is great and that is highly structured and then if that wasn't resolved then there'll be another a, a second escalation but you more likely would have probably got it solved in the next one and so the the takeaway is you've got these issues that were bottlenecks solved in a couple of hours Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what you said, of course, this kind of meeting needs need also take 
take also place yeah it depends it can be also each day or each week yeah it depends on the level yeah but of course mm. we need to discuss also about about uh, about performance where where are you and what do you miss in order that you you will achieve target for the next days yeah basically this is what you discuss also in the five minutes meeting yeah so it everything yep. is very is very linked yeah and it's very uh, targeted yeah <laughs> yeah yeah very intentional yeah i yeah, like it exactly okay and so and the other part there you said it is improves collaboration and and so that really brings us back to the beginning part where it's all around transformation and people about taking people on this journey all right okay so we're at the we've got the governance we've got a drum beat is there anything else about your approach uh, I think basically, if you if you have this, yeah, and if you have your uh, leaders doing uh, coming very often, you know, we, we call it again lean, you know, is the gamba work, yeah, go and see, yeah. I uh -huh. think it's very important that leaders are very often in um, either in the production side or going through the offices to meet the people in their country. They're gonna be visible. Country, exact visible. And it's not that that they need to go there just to ask, you know, if uh, if everything is uh, going according to the plan, yeah, but also to support yeah. them in terms of the coaching, to ask them, you know, what are you doing? Why are you doing yeah. this? You know, yeah. I think you need to really understand as leader what is happening. You know, what are the problems of your people? What is what is happening? How can you support them? How can you support them eliminate the waste? How can you support them improve? And of course, yep. this um, I think if people are out a lot, yeah, uh, leaders are out a lot. This this can only improve, you know, the the. Yep. Okay. So you do you call that go and see, go and walk. Go and see, go and walk. Talk to the people, yep. see things with your own eyes. Yeah. Don't always look just on the reports. Yeah. From that you got. Oh from, yes. Okay. From, from, from I think that's. Team, yeah? yeah. You've got to go and be. Not from the guys upstairs who would just sit upstairs in the ivory exactly. tower, but now get down on the shop floor in your words there. Exactly. And I think it's, it's it's a good one there is that it's not a, a, a chat. Uh, how you, how's the parents or how's the family? It is how, you know, how can I help you? What is the, uh, how can he support you? How can I help you improve? You exactly. know, again, coming back what you said, it focused, intentional. Exactly. And I think this, I would do, not only if I would be in the management of the company, but also as a shareholder, you know, I would do, you know, sometimes to go and to see by myself, you know, what is, what is happening there, you know, and what do the people do and yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. You've got to go visit. Yeah, exactly. yeah, got to get in the shop floor. We have a, one of this project here, we've got our team dispersed around the country and I, and I, I tell them, you know, you got to build the rapport with the people that were changing their, their universe. And you're not going to build a rapport over a screen. You need to meet with them, shake their hand, understand what they do. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Okay. So we've got, let me play that back to We've got our vision and objectives to start off with, our short term, long term. We identified the, the problem and even got down to the root cause. And from there, with our vision and understanding the problems we want to solve at the root cause, you developed an implementation plan from all the different functions that are in service of that vision that you did this with all everyone up and down the organization then you uh yeah the, the parts about the metrics that you were dealing with the key people so that one if these key people were able to deliver with reduced delays that they win everyone wins you've got your governance set up with your regular drum beat your your meetings are the short interval what do we call them the all interval, interval control, control. meetings mm -hmm. Yep, yep. So, and those points were that you are, and it, again, it's all intentional. This is, and it's all not for theatre or for uh, just for meeting, for meeting's sake. Very intentional to solve the problems they couldn't solve on their own to the first escalation within an hour. And then again, if those couldn't be solved within that group, escalated one more time. But the, the benefit there that you would have had these issues solved were within a couple of hours that were probably more likely holding you up from current work. And any plan work coming at least for the next day. And it had a lot of benefits there. That yes, it was solved, reduces the escalation, it was solved by the team, and it improved collaboration. All right. And the and the last one there is the go see. Is that the, the management 
is to get out from the ivory tower and then go and walk the walk, talk to talk, talk to the people on the ground. And it's, and it's just proper conversations about how they can help, how they can support and how they can help them improve. Exactly. It's a very good summary. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. All right. Well, my notes are right then. Okay, cool. Okay. Now, does that bring us on to our third point? Now you've got 20 plus years, worked all over Europe, large scale transformations, lots of m a s a lot of post merger at, at, um, integrations. If you could do it all again, what would you do differently? I think the main the main issue that 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 I have experienced is that you make all that I was saying that you make it stick, you know because sometimes and uh, the what I have experienced here yeah, is uh, when when Top management is not is not behind it. Yeah, it will not stick mm. because if the yep, top yep. management is not is not the first the first layer who is working the talk and 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 applying all these methods each day yeah, and working the talk, the moment that they will not apply them anymore or they will not care about them anymore, a lot from yep. what you set up yeah from what we discussed already will be gone yeah. And this is mm. also when you want to deploy, deploy a transformation or you deploy operations excellent, whatever. Yeah? So the first, first one is that the, it needs to be supported from the top, yeah, uh, long yep. term, yeah, not to be changed, you know, very fast to when, I don't mm. know, some of the managers change, yeah, so it should stick. So you, you, need, to, you need to make sure that everything that you deploy yeah, will become a routine and will come into the DNA of the people. Yeah? And this you yep. can only do by the repetition. Yeah? Okay, we start, we do, yep. and we repeat. Yeah? Uh, so I have seen it maybe stick after a few months or only. Yeah? All, the, yep. all the routines that we discussed and the governance and the reporting and the, me and the measuring. Yeah? But then... So what you're doing... Exactly. So what you're doing is establishing a new ways of working. Exactly. You establish a new way of working, yeah, and you keep it and you keep the pace and you follow it mm -hmm. up, yeah, and you make sure that it, that it sticks, yeah. So this is, I think, what, you know, at the beginning I was not aware about this, of course, you know, uh, when uh -huh. yeah. I just started my 20 career, years ago. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So this this is, of course, what I do different now or I'm supporting, you know, the mm -hmm. the clients or the, the companies where I'm working, you know, to make it stick or I'm doing it as a manager. And, of course, yeah. it's very important that you also, also have a reward, yeah, for the people to make it stick, yeah, because now we come back to, to, the, to the values and how, how, you, how you do things and not only what you do, yeah, so... And of course, mm -hmm. that you need Sorry. to also also reward the people who uh, support the routines and lead these routines and lead this lead lead these working ways. And uh, yeah, this is this is what, okay. what I'm do, doing different now. Yeah, and, uh, and that's what you would, yeah. that's what you would do differently. Had you had your chance again, more focused on the exactly. on the people element. Yeah, I, I got to say, my recent experience. That I think in the last, I don't know, maybe four to five years, that there's usually on a on one of the projects or programs I get called into for transformation, there is a, always a always project or program manager. There is a, a pool of BAs or business architects and, and BAs. And there was not so much a thing about a business change person. Then now it's like these are you know, project side, they've got the architecture, the side, the business analysis, and people change. It's like a staple part of projects now. It's like, yeah, you can't do these changes if you don't take the people with you. And yeah, so I, I, I see what you're saying there, definitely from the people side. But let's talk a little bit there when you talk about the routine, because what you're doing is if you are establishing a new routine and new ways of working, that's a cultural transformation in some cases. Exactly. Exactly. This is the transformation yeah. in the end. Yeah. Yeah. This is, uh, this is it. Yeah. Exactly. This is when people think they're doing a, a business transformation. They're going, well, no, they're changing the, the, the culture, the ways they're working. And of course, the business will change as a result of it. Exactly. And it's the same with the new, new, new technologies. Yeah, I could give us an example, you know, when, when I was deploying MES, Manufacturing Execution System. Yeah, This was, you know, the uh -huh. top of the iceberg. But 
what we did for a few months was really to work with the people to improve the to improve first the way that they were working together and the processes yeah and then to come with the tool when when yes. the people were all already de- prepared to start to work with, with the tool because to use a tool is very simple you know you just learn in a few hours it's not about the tool yeah, yeah? it's about yeah. you know all the processes behind and how to use it yeah yeah so, yes so the so the technology was the enabler not the driver exactly exactly not the driver yeah yeah yeah, yeah why, I think why this do, is yeah exactly why do you yeah. need a new technology okay you you want to improve something you want to improve a process because now we come again to, to the thing what do you want to improve you what is the problem that you want to solve yeah yes. and uh, come back to the beginning yeah. a lot of times it will not solve the problems because you just have already the issues in the organization in terms of the processes or of the working ways which you need to fix before you come with the tool with the new tool yes you know? okay so the, the takeaway the, the audience if you didn't if you missed that it is not leading with the with the tool or the technology guys i pick on them a little bit then probably unfairly that you know that the technology guys walk around with their technology new tech in the hand and every problem they see is a technology one because they have the, the technology bias every problem that in the organization can be solved by technology so well to your point well how about you get the process right and the new ways of working and then you're changing the way that the people behave the how and then what's the system that supports or enables that change not the not starting with the technology but using it last as an enabler exactly exactly this is the right order yeah <laughs> of doing the things yeah okay so you got that <laughs> yes it is the right order and even even i i don't know i poo poo on gartner but gartner or the togaf togaf have rightly got the enterprise architecture model and they got it in two parts, and they got the business architecture at the top and the technology architecture at the bottom. It's not a, well, it is a, a slight order, is that the business should indicate or dictate how it wants to operate, and technology supports it. Not the other way around about technology drives it, and now the business need to adopt to the technology. No, it's how can you change or enable the technology to support the business? Exactly. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> righty. okay so just to wrap that one up if you could do it again there's more people you've learned over the years that that it's got to be more people po- focus from the top not just a uh, words but actual behavior and even so to come down on the uh, the shop floor so they've got to walk the talk and they said it also and i think it's a good takeaway here for the audience is that you've got to keep these key people whether it's your executives uh, and not switch them out too fast or at all, but keep them there. So establish the new ways of working. So the next point was for you was the the new routines, the repetition, and the, the mother of all learning, repetition, 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 the mother of all learning, which could take you some time, a few months. And then, and then you said follow up. Make sure you follow up. So to keep sure that that repetition, the learning, the feedback loops. And the last one, number four, was the reward, reward and probably recognition of those that are going through this change and transformation to keep them incentivized and to motivated. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. All right. <laughs> okay, we did it. Okay. <laughs> Excellent, Arena. So now, we'll wrap it up there. Now, so for uh, people to get a hold of you, I'll put your contact details in the show notes to get to your LinkedIn and that we where your your current company where you're at, they can see you and they go, okay, I want to bring Arena. We're about to do an M and A, uh, and the post and migration integration. There, there's our our go to change manager. <laughs> they can get hold of you there. All Perfect. Right. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So it was it was it was very nice. Yeah. So thanks for this. Yeah. It was very 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 good experience. Yeah. To exchange with you. So. Uh, oh, my pleasure. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks a lot. You're for welcome. Thank me. you for thank you for your time and sharing your knowledge. Yeah, and uh, yeah, then I guess uh, I see you around. Yeah. So now now you know well, me. I'll I be. Know I'll be. You, so who knows, I'll yeah. be. Yeah. No, I'll be. Yeah. Uh, Staying in touch because we've got that Romania plans and you've got a lot yeah. of uh, intel on happy, Romania. Happy, happy to, to yeah. hear about this. Yeah, so I'm here if you need anything, if I can advise or support with something. Yeah. Okay, very good. We want to give too much away from the competition watching right now, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, Rena. Thank you very much thank from Manchester. And 
you have, have a fun. nice evening then yeah okay thank you okay thank catch you. up bye bye bye, bye. bye.